Hello folks. Well, no unboxing for me today because the vacuum cleaner I'm about to show you didn't come in a box. Here it is. The Vax Luna. The Vax Luna has been on my wish list for quite some time. Having previously owned one of these machines from new, I didn't buy it brand new from a shop. Someone was selling a new in the box one on eBay. It was about 15 years ago and I bought it got bored with it and sold it. The model I had was the deluxe version in a dark blue, exactly the same as this, but it also came with a stair cleaning hose and a hard floor washing tool. But apart from that, I think the machines are identical. It might have had electronic speed control as well. I'm not sure. But anyway, to get my hands on a Vax Luna, well, I'm very happy to have my hands on one especially one in exceptional condition. This is fantastic. This has been listed on eBay for a while and it was collection only as a lot of them are. And I offered the seller some money and said, can you box it up and um, I'll get a courier. The seller came back to me and said, yes, yeah, send me your phone number in the, but leave a gap between your phone number digits. This is a way of getting around eBay um, by exchanging uh, details outside of the eBay system. So I didn't bother. I thought, oh, well, I can't be bothered with it. And then the same machine came up on Gumtree, I think it was. And I thought, oh, let's, I'll try and bribe my partner. It was in Manchester, Greater Manchester. It's not too far, about 45 minutes in the car. And I said, look, if you take me here, I'll give you X amount of pounds as a bribe and we can go to the Trafford Centre where you can spend your John Lewis vouchers. So the deal was done. We went to pick this up. I contacted the seller. I said, look, I'm not messing you about. I will come for it. And on the on the night before collection, I said, we'll be there between 11 and 11.30. I turned up at the man's house at 11.15 and uh, knocked on the door. And the man said, oh, I'll have to go up in the loft and get it. Can you believe it? Now, if I was selling something for collection, I'd have it in my hall ready for the person. But now I had to stand on this man's doorstep like a lemon, waiting for him to rummage up in his loft or attic, if you're watching this outside the UK, to get this machine. So he brought it down, plug, put it down. And I thought, oh, that looks quite good. And a bin bag full of the tools. I had a quick rummage and said, well, where's the extension wand? And he said, what? I said, well, there should be a telescopic metal wand. Otherwise, I'll be uh, on my hands and knees trying to use this machine. And he said, was it pictured in the listing? I said, yes, it was. Oh, I'll go up in loft again. I think it was from Lancashire. I'll go up in loft again, lad, and have a look. So he did go up in his loft. And eventually, after another few minutes, he brought it down and I couldn't get out of there quick enough. I didn't even turn it on. Although there was a, a main socket right next to it. Shall I plug it in? I thought, no, let's get out of it. Get out of it get, and get to the Trafford Centre and then I can uh, bring this home. So it's great. I haven't used it yet. Spoiler alert. It does work. The pump works. The motor works. I haven't actually uh, used it for anything. So I'll be... Uh, trying it out for the first time in this video. So let's have a closer look after that little uh, story that most of you will have fast forwarded through. Let's have a closer look at the Vax Luna. I'm not really sure when the Vax Luna came out. It's certainly in the 90s or even the 2000s. And it was Vax's attempt to make a more domestic looking three-in-one vacuum. This functions exactly the same as their 6131 orange tub but it's in a more pleasing form factor, but it is absolutely huge. I mean, I don't know how easy it is for you to see how big this machine is, but for a bit of size comparison, I've got to uh, happen to have, just retrieved from my garage, because I'm going to sell it, a SIBO K-Series vacuum. Well, even from this shot, it's, uh, it's very hard for you to see how huge this machine is. Um, you get the general idea. It is massive. It does stand on its end though. I'd say it's around double the size and a bit more of the SIBO K series. But it does move fairly easily across the floor. It's got two large wheels and two front swivel casters. You can, at a fashion, pull it behind you as you're vacuuming. But um, it is certainly 
one beast of a machine. Okay folks, well let's show you what I got for my £45, apart from the machine itself. Obviously, there is a flexible hose, the telescopic wand, this is a turbo nozzle, yes that came as standard and this looks pretty much unused. It is, I can confirm, a Wieselweg turbo nozzle, German made turbo nozzle. You also get the familiar square or oblong Vax dusting brush, the oblong Vax upholstery nozzle. Again these all look unused and again probably unused crevice tool. Here's the main washing head. This is just the same washing head as supplied with the 6131 which I believe is now discontinued. So if you want one of those 6131 orange tubs from Vax you might have to shop around now. They're not on Vax's website. They're becoming a bit thin and far between. This is the same but it's in the nice colour coordinated blue colour. This one though also comes with this. So you can convert this, if I can do it correctly, into a dry pickup nozzle. I suppose you could use it on your hard floors as well as carpets. It's got a squeegee at the back, two tiny wheels, litter pickers. Because yes, there is no hard floor nozzle. You could, I suppose, use the turbo nozzle on a hard floor. So there's that. And when I got this machine, this was attached. I wouldn't be surprised if the original user tried to use it with this for carpet washing. If you have this on for carpet washing, it will not work very well at all. Right, also, the piece de resistance. We have the quick start guide and the full instruction book telling you how to set up the Luna for dry cleaning, wet pickup and carpet shampooing. Now here's the only downside of this cleaner which has taken me a, <laughs> taken me a little while to sort out. Now in the listing I saw the solution tube and it was in two parts and I didn't really think much of it until I had a closer look at the online instruction book and saw that this should have been in one piece. So I went online and tried to find a replacement curly solution tube for the Luna and you cannot get them. I haven't, I've looked at loads and loads of places. All my usual haunts for old parts. Couldn't find it so I thought well I'll get a little, you can buy sort of a joining piece to fix two, two of the parts together. But this isn't all of it, it's just, it just starts falling apart. I mean it is very I could, I don't know if it'll, it probably won't, it probably won't fall apart now, but it was in several pieces. It wasn't just in two pieces. When I had a closer look, it was in about six to eight pieces. I've thrown some of the pieces away. I've just kept this just to show you what should come with it. Of course, it would have the connectors either side. So after a lot of searching, working out the diameter of this, and if you're interested for the Luna, this is a four millimeter internal diameter six millimeter external diameter tube. So you can buy one of those tubes and put the ends on, which is what I did. Unfortunately, it's blue. I've had so much trouble getting these one of these curly tubes. This is from um, a compressor, an air compressor. And I originally ordered one in black and was told, oh, it's not available anymore. And I ordered another one in black. Again, a different seller. Oh, we haven't got any. So I found this one. The seller did have one. It is the right dimensions and as you can see I've fitted on the ends but I have made it a lot wider. Now this was pretty tightly coiled and it is supposed to fit on your hose and wands without any clips. It just goes over but you can see here look it's not quite the same although that is a lot, a lot better than it was. So to try and uncoil it a bit, I coiled it round a tin of baked beans, an empty tin of baked beans, put that in hot water and then filled the tin of baked beans with boiling water and left that. I was hoping it would sort of loosen it up and it has, but not enough. So the other thing I did was to stretch this out completely and left it stretched out. 
um, I had to wedge it in between two things. So it's better, but it's not perfect, but at least I can show you the machine in action. And finally, um, I did get a bag with it as well. You can buy bags for this machine still. And this is the other piece. I need that when I'm using this machine as a carpet washer. To remove the motor from the cleaner, there's a little gray catch at the front here. You just pull that up and the motor comes away. And inside we can see a float valve with a filter and the solution tank. You don't need the solution tank for dry pickup or wet pickup. You only need to use the solution tank for shampooing. So obviously you fill this with warm water and Vax cleaning solution. Got a handle there. Not a very big capacity, so it will require constant filling and emptying. Inside the cleaner itself is the float cage. It just twists off. Now I haven't actually washed this filter. I've got a spare one. I found someone selling it. This is just a sponge. It will wash. This was how it was when I got it. So you can see it's not had much use. And this is the float valve that rises up to cut the suction off when the cleaner's full of liquid. You need to put this in for dry pickup as well as wet. Before I put it back, it makes it easier to put the dust bag in if I don't have the float valve in. So it goes this way up with this cut out at the top and it fits on to this bag support collar thing here. You just locate it at the bottom and then you push it forward and it should fit into place. You can open out the bag a bit if you want to. Now, obviously when you turn it on it will start to open out on its own. And then you can replace the float valve this way up. And there's an arrow showing you which way to uh, tighten it. You just have to find the, the lugs at the bottom. There we go. So that's in place. So that's ready for dry use. Let's have a look at the motor unit. Now I have replaced this. This is just the blue filter you'd find on a standard fax machine. I've just had to cut it to size because it's uh, quite a bit smaller than the one that's uh, originally supplied with the 6131. So I just bought a pack of 6131 filters and cut this. But what was here, it had disintegrated, was more or less um, a very coarse black spongy material. So I think this will be slightly better at uh, keeping any fine dust or any debris from the motor. Underneath there, the motor did look very clean and rust free. I had a quick peek. So, you know, not a lot to see there. On the back, there's another filter, which um, I'm not sure if it's disintegrated. I think it's okay. This is the sort of filter that was at the pre-motor here, but it's very coarse. It will let a lot of stuff through. Um, if you can still buy these, and I did buy a pack of these, but it was disintegrated in the pack more or less. So this sort of stuff does, does, does disintegrates with age, but you can easily replace this with something very similar from um, an aquarium filter. Just cut them to fit, it's very easy to do. This one has got a little cut out here. You can just, yeah, you can just about see there, look. Um, and that goes, that corresponds with this uh, doobly here that sticks up, so you just have to locate it the right way. So that's not, it's not a fine filter, it's more of a diffuser that, really. So that goes on the back, like so. Also on the back, we've got an on-off switch with a splash-proof cover. We've got automatic cord rewind. And the button in the middle here is the pump, and that does illuminate when the pump is running. Here's the underside of the Luna. I would have liked to have seen a carry handle sort of here somewhere. We've got a carry handle on the top, so you can only really carry it this way. And obviously, when it's got water in it, you have to keep it horizontal. You can't carry it like this when there's water in the machine. But it would have been nice when used as a dry vacuum to have another way of carrying it. So you could be carrying it up the stairs like that instead of like that. Oh, it's a workout lifting that up. We have two very nice quality 
swivel casters I think if they only put one in the middle it would be forever tipping to one side so that gives it a bit of stability of course as far as stability con is concerned this is far more stable than the tub version because it's lower to the ground um, you can't really tip this machine over and you've got the wheels of course it's in lovely condition isn't it I mean I just wiped as I said I just wiped it gave it a bit of a polish fantastic I was so, so pleased to get this let's have a quick look at this label I don't know if we can date it from this this says Vax for advice or assistance call Vaxcare on 0870 606 1248 if you want to call that it's up to you but I doubt I doubt that number's working now so it's got the splash proof symbol by the looks of it it's double insulated it's got the CE approval mark and it's a uh, BEAB approved as well IPX4 that's something to do with uh, water resistance I think um, model 28-001 23240 volts 1300 watts max 1200 watts nominal 50 to 60 hertz serial number FY102426 okay well now we've got this sleek lightweight compact vacuum cleaner set up for dry use let's put the hose on and the hose is just a push fit just give it a push and a, a bit of a twist and that should stay in position there's some little bit of sticky stuff I haven't completely removed from the handle but here's the handle you've got uh, a suction relief valve there and uh, there was one clip I think it was near the, the body of the machine I'm assuming that it, there should be one clip with this machine and they are slightly bigger than the Vax 6131 clips because I did buy a 6131 solution tube assembly thinking I could use it for this without with different ends on and it came with the clips but the clips are too small for this diameter hose and when the clips were on they were basically opening out too much this side and pinching the solution tube this side so basically the water wouldn't have flown uh, flowed through the tubing so yeah so that's the hose anyway here's a telescopic wand which way does it go on that way again it's a push and give it a bit of a twist to secure it and then we can pop on the Veselvik turbo nozzle again push and a twist this is adjustable you've got the the vent at the top we can adjust it for short or high pile so I'll put it on the high pile setting for my <laughs> notorious carpet and we can adjust of course the the wand height so I'm all ready to give this a go dry vacuuming nowhere to put the onboard tools what am I saying there isn't any onboard tools I was trying to say folks it's been it's been a long week there's nowhere to put the small tools obviously when I'm storing this away I put the small tools inside the machine with the solution tube etc I don't think I can fit this inside as well but I can get all the little bits in as well as the uh, solution tank okay well I'll clear the decks and we'll give this a go I've just got to pull out the mains cord I've just noticed there's a lack of a parking bracket you know it would be nice to have something to secure the wand at the end of the machine or even when the machine's upright and stored there's nothing on the back either so yeah for storage I think this is probably going to be worse to store away than the conventional tub at least the conventional tub although it's taller has a smaller footprint I think the um, the auto cord rewind is a little bit you know but it's not too bad it does work eventually the cord is a horrible flat type I'm not keen on this type of cord there should be a sticker yes there's a red sticker so we'll just let it go in a bit there we are and this is a a perma plug and you can buy these you can still buy these actually and I think they are still made in the UK I've seen some on Amazon there's a quality assurance seal on it but I, th I think if I was to I can't take the seal off oh it says made in England you can't see it because of the seal it says made in England but yes if you go on Amazon they still sell this style of plug right okay I'm it might switch on I'm not sure 
No, it hasn't. Right, let's switch it on. Well, let's, before I do any vacuuming, we'll do the old suction test with an empty bag, shall we? But we'll first turn the cleaner on. It's a bit meh, you know, for suction, meh. Let's actually see. I am. Um, I don't know. It's not going. I don't think it's going to go over eighty somehow. So I think this is. It feels less suction than a Henry, to be honest. But uh, we'll see what the gauge says. Well, it almost reached 70 on the gauge, so that's not very good, is it? For an up to 1300 watt motor, it produces less suction than a Henry at 620 watts. So it uses, you know, about double the electricity, but it doesn't produce a suction. It's not even 80. So yeah, you'd think such a big machine like this would have gone up to well, well, well over 80. So the newest I can compare this to that I've shown you recently is that Thomas vacuum and that didn't that go up to 120 on the gauge? I can't remember. You'll have to check back on the video. Comparing this to the Thomas, the Thomas is smaller than this and lighter and a lot lower down. But the you know, this is a this is just a machine to show people interested in vacuums and collecting vacuums. It's not for any help if you want to buy one because you can't buy them although if you've just got one or found one in the loft and want to know how to use it hopefully this video will help you there but anyway yeah mediocre so it's not going to really whiz this uh, turbo nozzle very fast is it let's have a look we'll close it off though and we'll have a look <laughs> Not there, yeah, not bad, but it is, <laughs> it's definitely going to slow down when I put it on the carpet, especially this carpet. As I said, I'm going to um, I'm going to open up the vent, so hopefully it'll still keep uh, running fairly fast, uh, even on this plush carpet. Right, okay, well I'll give it a push. <laughs> Thump. <laughs> well, with the uh, with the debris open, it's it is fairly easy to push, and I could sort of hear that the brushes were still spinning. They hadn't completely stalled, but when I switched to low pile, then yes, I was having a bit more of an effort. But it's uh, so light. <laughs> but it does, yeah. Saying that, a lot of vacuum cleaners aren't very easy to pull along on this carpet. Despite the size and bulk and weight of this, you know, it's, it's quite nimble, you know. It's just the, it's just the size of the machine. I, I pity anyone who bought one of these to use as their only vacuum. But I think what's happened with this, because of the condition of the dry tools, I don't think they ever use this for dry use. They just use it possibly once for shampooing, thought, oh, it's rubbish and put it in the loft. But as I said earlier, I think they've used it with the carpet attachment. Oh, that reminds me. Let's uh, let's see what it's like with the uh, little plate over the uh, shampooing nozzle. See how it works on this carpet. Vax do call this a dry vacuuming attachment. So I am assuming it's for hard floors as well as carpets. Okay, right, hang on, it's not on straight. There we go. Let's give this a go then. Yeah. 
moves okay. Uh, I'm just going to put a bit of dirt down, folks. We'll try we'll try this nozzle with dry dirt. We'll try the turbo nozzle as well. And then I'll set this up. We'll do a very quick shampooing demo. Uh, first of all, I need to get some muck to chuck on the carpet. <laughs> Well, both nozzles were pretty mediocre, although I'll say the turbo nozzle did a better job than the straight suction nozzle. You might have been able to see that a lot of the larger debris was just sitting in the nozzle. You'd have to tip the nozzle back to enable the vacuum to suck it into the dust bag. So I suspect there was some black sand in that uh, demo dirt. I suspect that when I wash this part of the carpet, we're gonna see some black sand in the dirty water what do you think folks well because it's done such a poor job of cleaning i'm going to see if it's done <laughs> see if it does a better job of shampooing i doubt it very much if this had more suction you know at least henry suction it might be okay but yeah this is one of those white elephant vacuum cleaners that collectors love but the general public when they bought it thought what a terrible mistake i've made okay then I don't think I've made a mistake. I'm really chuffed to have this, but I'm a bit strange. I'm going to fill the solution tank now with some solution and warm water, and we'll set this up for vaxing. Okie dokie, well, the first thing we need to do is take off the motor unit and remove the dust bag. I'll remove the uh, float cage first, just to make it easier to take the bag out. And. Uh, there we go, out comes the dust bag and in goes the float valve cage again, complete with a sponge filter, that's in place. To give this fax a fighting chance of actually doing some cleaning, I've uh, put in some Vax Platinum Solution. It's supposed to be Vax's best solution. Now into the recovery tank and I had to measure out the capacity of this, because it doesn't tell you, this takes around two and a half litres and with that solution it's 40 mil per litre. So I've just put in 100 millilitres of solution, I think that's about right. So top it up with hand hot water and 100 mil of VAC solution. Don't top it right up, leave a little bit of a gap because when you put in the siphon tube some water will come out if it's too full. So I'm going to carefully locate the tank in the machine. Careful not to spill any. So that just sits, just nestles between the float cage like that. Next thing we need to do is to take the motor unit and here there's a little stopper that you need to open. Always have that closed when using the machine for dry pickup. And into the hole we put in the tube here just pushes in like so and at this end there's a little mesh filter so that goes into the solution tank 
and then it pumps the solution through the pump, through the hose and to the nozzle. So if I carefully move the machine, we can just about see the hole here. So we have to make sure that this pipe goes into that hole. And then you locate the motor unit at the back first and then gently close it at the front. There we go. Right, now to attach the solution tube. Attaching this solution tube is going to be harder than using the original because it's a much tighter coiled spring, but it is doable, but it does take a bit of time. First of all, I've got to remove the hose. Make sure we've got the right end near the machine. So it's this end here, that goes into the cleaner, and it's the end with the white button, goes into the washing head. So, what's the easiest way of doing this, I wonder? Um, well, first of all, I'll take off the turbo nozzle because we don't need that. And I'll take the washing head minus the dry cleaning attachment. It's still full of bits, as you can see. Let's shake out the bits. And uh, we'll pop that on the end, like so. So now I've got to, this is tricky, folks. As I said, with the original, that's in pieces, it fits over the hose, look. Much easier because it's a wider diameter. So I'll show you part of this. Let's see, what's the best way of doing it? Um, you see, I'm not going to be able just to pull it over as easily. Well, it's not, it is a lot better than it was, I have to say. By stretching it and leaving it on that uh, around that tin of empty tin of beans, it has helped loosen up the spring. And I think I could make it bigger. I need to find a bigger tin. Actually, yes, I do have a, a larger diameter tin that's about the size I need. Pineapple chunks, I think. So I might do that, leave it a long time though. And hopefully, eventually, that's getting in the way, that clip. Hopefully, eventually, this is a lot better though. It is going on much easier. Right, well, I'll finish the job and then show you whenever things in the correct place. Everything is connected up. Hopefully there'll be no leaks because I haven't actually tried this using this new solution tube. So hopefully I've fitted it properly to uh, either end of the connectors. So, you know, it's doable. It fits. It's fairly loose around the wands, which is as it should be. I've connected it up to the back of the washing head. There's no trigger near the handle like you get with some vax machines it does use the foot operated release so it's that way to shut off the solution and to the back to let the solution flow if you're storing one of these nozzles away always leave it in the open position if you leave it in the closed position the little internal hose can become kinked although it is made of a slightly more flexible tubing than the rest of it so it should be okay so that's all connected up it's wrapped around the hose as you can see and we've got the other end of the solution tube in here at the machine end okay well it's time to switch the machine on you can't operate the pump on its own you do have to have the motor running as well so i'll first get the solution pumped through and when we see some water at the washing head we should be able to start trying to clean some carpet <laughs> Well, after a little bit of uh, swearing and banging with a hammer, I have managed to get the solution to flow. So hopefully it will continue to flow when I uh, clean a bit of this carpet. So back on with the machine. It's in the off position at the head. So I turn the machine on and the pump and then get the solution flowing. <laughs>
Using this Luna is very like using a Vax 6131. After all, it's got the same wash head and I expect around the same sort of power. Let's have a look at the dirty water. I don't know if I'm going to get splattered with a, a bit of solution when I release this. Oh, no, fine. I'll take off the hose. I haven't done very much of this carpet, obviously. Oh, ooh. Well, it's very foamy. I forgot to put some defoamer in. I will for the next part of the demo. I wonder how much solution I've used. Probably quite a lot. Oh no, well, yeah, it's nearly empty. But then again, I've, I did a lot more shampooing than you saw in this demo, you know, to get some extra shots for you. Yeah, but it's uh, foamed up quite a lot. It smells nice, this vac solution though. It's quite hard to see actually. Uh, we'll take off this, there's a lot of bits. What? A, ooh, a lot of brown bits on the filter. I don't know where they, where they come from. I was expecting the black sand. Pop that to one side. Oh, it's hard to see with all the foam, isn't it, folks? I'll have to decant this into, well, some of this into a jug and wait for the foam to disperse. Actually, no, best thing, I'll just pop some defoamer in that. If I can find it, I'm not sure where it is, actually. So I can't find the defoamer, I think. I must have left it at my mum's house because that's the last time I used it when I demonstrated another Vax, um, one of the vintage Vax 111 machines. But um, I've uh, tipped some of the water out of the machine into this clear Pyrex jug. And as you can see, that's pretty dirty. I certainly wouldn't want to drink that or even have a bath in it. But if your bath will tip some out, if your bath water looks like that after you've had a bath, you're either very, very dirty or you work down a coal mine. But that, yeah, it's surprising, really. It's a lot of work and effort, and I expect the carpet's still quite damp, even though I went over it. Yeah, it's sopping. I went over it loads of times. I certainly won't be uh, swapping this for my Bissell Big Green Clean Machine. But, you know, for what it is, <laughs> it's not too bad. We're looking after two dogs this week, so we have four dogs in the home. And one of the dogs, this particular dog here, this is Lottie. Lottie is Daisy's full sister. They shared a womb together, but Daisy has nothing to do with her. Completely blanks you. But uh, Lottie is a bit naughty in the house. I've had to clear up several wee-wees. And I know she's weed on this mat. I shouldn't really be kneeling on it. So I'm going to give this mat a good clean with the old Luna and uh, mm, she's going tomorrow aren't you Lottie so we'll have less wee wee this one here you've seen her previously Willow she doesn't seem to wee in the house but she's annoying in her own special way and Daisy's asleep behind my darling Daisy no trouble are you Daisy right Lottie I shouldn't be doing this until you've gone but uh, the whole house is going to have a deep clean after you two so and so's have left but <laughs> anyway Let's see if there's any hidden dirt in this black entrance mat.
have to say it smells lovely in this room now because I put in a bit of scented disinfectant in with the VATS cleaning solution because as I suspect this has been wee weed on and we want to make it smell nice and uh, kill any bacteria that might be on this entrance mat. Looks okay. Let's have a look at the water. I've let it settle a bit so hopefully it won't be quite so foamy. I'll just take out the uh, the float valve. It's still quite foamy. It's not actually as dirty as I thought it would be. This mat does get shampooed probably once a fortnight with some sort of machine, one machine or other, whatever machine I've got out at the time. But it is, you know, quite yucky in there, isn't it? And certainly this, uh, this entrance mat certainly looks cleaner. The pile's been restored and it certainly smells nicer. Well, that's about the end of today's video on this Vax Luna, quite a rare machine. And I'm sure a lot of you have never seen one of these before, let alone seen one in action. At the time of making this video, I couldn't find any other videos on YouTube featuring the Vax Luna. So that goes to prove just how rare this machine is. If you have any comments or questions about this Vax 3-in-1 machine, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.